Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas, 2014, third year of the show, second year for theCUBE here, 13,500 people gathering to uh, hear what Andy Jassy called the new normal of cloud computing. A whole lot of services, uh, big announcements yesterday on the main stage going through, uh, lots of solutions fitting the enterprise. Today in the keynote, Werner Vogels gets on stage wearing a Soundgarden Bad Motherfinger t-shirt, last year he was wearing Nirvana, of course showing out the Seattle Sound and, and announcing some really cool technologies. These um, talking about things that that, uh, that the geeks have really been waiting for. Of course, the the, the big one uh, is the Amazon EC2 Container Services, which is Docker support. Got a bunch of rounds of uh, applause when uh, it was announced. Ben Gulub from uh, Docker, Cube alum, who's going to be on with us later today, came to talk about how how Docker is changing things. Uh, what what Jerry Chen, uh, the VC uh, behind uh, Docker, said is the new um, it, it, it's it, it's the, 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 the new unit of computing uh, is, is what Docker is, the container's hottest technology we've seen. Been watching this meteoric rise, uh, interviewed them back at Red Hat Summit earlier this year. Of course, they were making announcements with VMware, with Google, and now here uh, with, with, with Amazon. Uh, the joke I had is, you know, everybody says we are the best place uh, for Docker, and of course, Amazon wants to be close here. And, and a new cool technology called Lambda, uh, which uh, is really really uh, event-driven computing for dynamic applications. A um, little bit of a futuristic uh, look out as, as to where they're going, uh, attack some of the, the core features of what platform as a service or PaaS applications uh, are looking at. So if you take you know, the Docker uh, plus the Lambda, some really cool things down the road. Amazon continues to differentiate itself from the rest of the marketplace and is why really this cloud computing space is Amazon's lose. Uh, joining me for the intro segment, uh, Jeff Kelly, our big data guy uh, here on the, uh, on the floor, meeting with all the vendors. We're going to have a lot of the keynote people on today, Jeff, a lot of them big data uh, companies like uh, Splunk, who you've been at the Splunk conference for the last three years. Uh, we've got the Weather Channel on. Uh, what have you seen so far? What are you looking forward to covering today? Uh, well, those two you just mentioned are, are top on my list. Um, I think you know, it was interesting listening to the keynote this morning. They brought Splunk on stage, Godfrey Sullivan, talked about how they're going all in on AWS. Um, and the Weather Channel talks about how their, you know, the, the Weather Company, I should say, the Weather Channel is just one of their properties. They're much more than just a cable TV channel. Uh, they are delivering um, data services to the likes of Apple, Google, Yahoo, and others. Um, and what both those uh, keynote speakers, I think, highlighted for me, and one of the real uh, areas of potential differentiation for Amazon relative to big data is the flexibility and the agility and the, uh, that allows their customers to iterate very quickly uh, on data-centric applications and services. Um, you don't have to worry about setting up the hardware. You don't have to worry about configuring the network. When you have uh, data flowing through your system and you've got new uh, opportunities with customers to deliver them either differentiated analytics or in, some, in the case of weather service, uh, the weather company delivering streams of weather data so that they can integrate them into their applications, uh, or in the case of Splunk, uh, you know, bringing in all that machine data, doing the analysis, and quickly spinning up new views of it, uh, new applications using it. The cloud allows you to do that in ways that is very difficult to translate uh, on premise. So, to me, that's really one of the big uh, areas where AWS uh, can, is, is a benefit for big data practitioners. Of course, the challenge is, you know, the whole data gravity question. Most of the data that enterprises are dealing with today, they've been they built up over many years, it's in their internal data centers. Moving that to the cloud is an issue. Um, and people have to wait. The expense of that versus the benefit you get from moving to the cloud. Of course, you know, AWS will say security, we've got the best security in the world. The reality is it's still an issue. There are still um, enterprises that, especially in regulated industries, that are going to be reluctant to move to the cloud for that reason. And then, in, just in terms of, especially related to big data, you think about, if you're a data-driven company, and data is your, one of your core assets, especially when it comes to real production workloads. What I'm hearing from uh, practitioners is that in a lot of cases, especially where performance is critical, um, they're still kind of clinging to their on-premise deployments for that. 
uh, so they have a little bit more control over that. So, huge opportunity for AWS. I don't see big data moving 100% uh, over to AWS in a lot of cases, but it's definitely going to play a big role. Yeah, Jeff, you've got a great point there. Uh, the, the, one of the buzzwords we've been hearing is everybody talks about all in on cloud. Uh, one of the people uh, in, in the keynote was uh, Phil from Omnivore. If you're not familiar with Omnivore, they're the ones that supply all of the music's, uh, music to companies like Spotify, Sirius XM and the like, uh, and ha had a really great discussion with him, and they started out with their own data centers. They'd spent you know, millions and millions of dollars of building out this infrastructure to allow them to, to deploy content around the world with, with streaming music. And you know, there's billions of files that they have in their data center. Um, they are a huge you know, Amazon partner, close relationship with Werner Vogel, that's why they came on stage, you know, great you know, kind of the music vibe and what's going on there. But you know, those old data centers, it's not like they threw them out and got rid of them. Uh, they just found repurpose for them. So uh, they're actually working with universities that we can do analytics on it. And it is the master copy so that if the online version uh, ever has a little bit of uh, trouble and the, the codecs aren't working quite right, they can go kind of back to the master tape. So Jeff, you bring up a real good point. Uh, when we say it's, it's all in uh, on, on Amazon, it doesn't mean that there's not other options. Uh, we're still going to have, uh, you know, companies having some data on their own properties, and they're going to use services from other environments. I've talked to a number of uh, customers here at AWS that they say, oh, Amazon's my strategic partner, I'm working with them. I said, great, what's your CRM? Oh, we're using Salesforce. Well, of course, uh, you know, Google Docs is still using a lot. When we've done surveys of customers, even the ones that love Amazon, uh, they're using Microsoft application for a lot of environments. They're probably Office 365 yeah. customers, so we know it is a multi-cloud world, and Amazon's positioning has been that, you know, look, they're not trying to you know, rule the world, of course, they have to say that, uh, but it's not a winner take all. There is room for their partner ecosystem to grow. A uh, big question I have is, you know, if you're partnering with Amazon, you know, how much are they going to take the high margin pieces, how much are they going to do themselves, and how much uh, will they eat that ecosystem? That's a good point. Um, if you're a partner of, of AWS, AWS offers you a huge opportunity to build a great business, but it also, you better be innovating because AWS is watching, they see what's hot, what's driving revenue for their partners, and then if it makes sense for them, they'll create their own service to try to take that, take that high margin business. Uh, so, you, so, so what it does is it, it, it requires partners to keep innovating and, and, and uh, doubling down on what they're doing. Uh, you can't sit still in this marketplace. Yeah, it, what's really fascinating to me, kind of looking in, uh, you know, tr trying to find as much as, you, much as you can about what Amazon's doing, uh, year after year they keep adding new features, you know, and, and expanding what they're working on. And as you grow bigger, it, it's, it's really difficult to keep building on that. How do they keep nimble? Uh, when I talked to the, the head of engineering for, for Amazon, he said, you know, the, the team really just owns that code. It's not, I do a little bit of development and throw it over the wall. I, I give it over to somebody else. It's, I'm going to own that feature. Loosely coupled teams, moving fast, adding on top of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's, it's, you know, it's, I mean, something like Aurora announced uh, yesterday, uh, getting into the relational database world. I mean, you know, we hear a lot of practitioners running relational databases on AWS, and guess what? AWS sees the opportunity. They hear from customers that they're frustrated with their relational database vendors. Uh, they're expensive, they tend to be a bit rigid. Uh, AWS comes in and you know, they, they spent three years developing the product. This isn't something they just spun up overnight. Um, and it's just an example of how AWS is always looking for opportunities uh, to add more value, build their business. All right, so uh, we, we got so many guests we need to get through today, so we're going to be here all day. Uh, Jeffrey F. Kelly on Twitter, Amat Stu on Twitter, at Furrier will be here shortly uh, to help us pound through all of these great use cases from the Amazon executives, partner ecosystems, bunch of end users, uh, real luminaries. I'm, I'm thrilled that we're going to have James Hamilton on again. A thousand people went and saw his session earlier today. Um, you know, extracting the signal through the noise. Always check out siliconangle.tv for, for the event coverage. Uh, Wikibon.org, uh, Wikibon's uh, chief analyst, Dave Vellante, laid down a killer piece uh, talking about how Amazon is changing uh, the economic model for enterprise IT and really turning services into software economics. So lots of data coming out of this show. We're looking to bring it all to you through video, through the research, and of course on CrowdChat, crowdchat.net slash reinvent to get engage. Send us your questions, send us your feedback. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back with our first guest of day three here at Amazon reInvent right after this quick break.